Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and we have been working really hard on wiring up this RC car. And we've gotten it wired up. We used our motor driver here with some extra power to drive these motors and they, we know that they turn on because we did that in a previous lesson. And now we're going to use this little IR guy to control whether they are on or off. And I'm really excited about that. This will be a lot of fun. We learned how to use the remote in this and now we're gonna use the codes that we got from the remote. So that's a previous lesson. If you don't have your remote codes, check out that previous lesson. We're gonna use these codes today to start programming what our car can do. So over in our Arduino IDE, we have a little bit of code that we used to see what was going on with our IR. And that gave us the codes that we have. And now we're gonna do something with that code. And that is we're gonna make cases. So at the end of your code that you have so far, but inside this if bracket, here's the end of our if right there. Inside of that, we're going to write a little bit more code. So give yourself a little bit of space. And if you're a patron of ours at patreon.com slash Rosie Research, you have access to all this code and you don't have to type it in if you don't want to, although it's a great way to learn it. So the way that we start checking our values is we open up a thing called switch value and that is gonna have its own open curly bracket. And now we can write cases. So for example, for case 765, when I hit pause, I probably want everything to stop. So I would write case 765, and then you do a full colon there. And now we can write something. Maybe I tell it to serial.print the word stop so that I know what is happening. That could be really useful so I know that I hit the right button and that the Arduino is seeing that button being hit. And now maybe for stop, I want to digitally write all of these guys, all of my motor pins to low. Because if they're all low, the motors won't be going on. So I can do that by putting them all low. So let's put that code in there, just like that. And that will do everything we need to do for stopping, right? Now we wanna go for a new case, and at the end of each case, you just write a break with a semicolon. All right, and give yourself a little space even up here between your cases, and that will help you keep your code organized. Now let's say I want to move forward, and maybe on my remote, this volume plus sorta of feels like that would be the most logical place for me to go forward. And the case number for that is 25245. So I could go over into my Arduino IDE and I could write case number 25245 and I could put my full colon there and now I'm gonna write everything that I want to do when this button is pressed. The first thing I'll do is I'll serial print that line because I'm gonna do a new line. I want to know that I am now going forward. That's gonna be pretty important in terms of troubleshooting. And we also learned that going forward was writing digital five high. So instead of being low, that one would be high. And number seven was also high. And that drove my motors in what was a forward direction in our last lesson. So I could just do that. Now, six and eight are still gonna be low. So I don't even need to worry about six and eight here. But if I wanted to be extra sure, if I was coming from sort of different scenarios where maybe they weren't always low, we could also copy these lines here in to make sure that, okay, those ones are also going to be low, just in case that they come from a different thing where maybe they were high. And if we don't rewrite them low, then they wouldn't go low that time. All right, and since that's the all I want to do with that case for now, we could write the break just like that. And then we can verify our code, make sure we have all of our squiggly brackets. And yep, it's very, very happy. So we can plop this on over onto our Arduino. And we will open up our comm channel. So now that we have that code on there, we can come over here and press our forward. This guy will go and we can press stop just like that which is pretty great. I did make a little change to our circuit in that I connected our five volts to the board and then from our power into this part of the board. And for some reason that seemed to help my IR receiver. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does make it work for me where I can now go forward and stop, which is great. 
And so in our next lesson, we will work on some turns and writing the code for that. And we will also do a Tinkercad tutorial so that we can get this all into a fun little project that actually moves and stays together, which is a little bit easier than what it is now. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you soon. Bye friends.